Um, so we have a facial region, which is all of this, and a cranial region. And there are nares, external nares, and orbits. Um, actually, I should have probably grabbed a cat just for comparison, but that's okay. Um, there is a foramen magnum, occipital condyles, tympanic bulla, these swellings on the bottom, otherwise known as auditory bulli. Um, the external acoustic meatus is this opening here, okay, and that's where the eardrum sits. Tympanic membrane sits right there. Um, there's a mastoid process, which is not super obvious on these guys. On us, it's enormous. If you feel right behind your ear, this big bump there, that's the mastoid process on us. On these guys, it's pretty small, and it's this little process right behind the external auditory meatus, this little bump right here. And the easy way to find it is to notice that there's this foramen that lies just inside of it. That's called the stylomastoid foramen. And so if you're looking for the mastoid process, you look for the hole, and then there it is. Okay. And that mastoid is small in uh, carnivores? I don't know. I mean, certainly, I'm not sure that's generally true. It's certainly small in cats and dogs, because yeah. we've got those here. Um, but it's big when you use the no, oh, you're We're thinking of the course. paracondylar process, or the jugular process, oh, okay. I think, aren't you? And that's actually pretty big in the, in the dog by comparison with the cat, um, which I guess we're just getting to, but that's this one here. And it's not as big as it is in the herbivore, but it's way bigger than in the cat. So this is the paracondylar process, which our other book calls the jugular process. Um, just to be annoying, this, this is the jugular foramen right next to it, so that's probably why. Um, I think paracondylar makes more sense. There's the condyle, there's the, this off to the side. Before we leave that area, mm -hmm. um, which hole were you pointing at for the external acoustic meatus? The bigger one? The big one, yeah, oh, right here. Okay. Um, zygomatic arch, I think everyone got that one. <laughs> Good. Uh, mandibular fossa, that's where the lower jaw articulate, so it's the space right here where the lower jaw goes. That's the mandibular fossa. And what's a fossa in general? Flat. Shallow indentation. Shallow pit, yeah. Okay. Um, Post-orbital processes, so there is the orbit, so there's some things poking down behind it. Those would be your post-orbital processes. Um, a temporal line is this line along here where it marks the edge of the temporal muscle, the temporalis. Okay. And we have something that says sagittal crest. There's not much of a sagittal crest on this guy, but it would be here if there were one. And that's um, typically uh, males in a lot of mammal species that have, at least in carnivores, will have pretty well-developed sagittal crests because they have bigger jaw muscles mm -hmm. than the females. And the females typically not as much. Um, okay, nuchal crest. So this is the sagittal crest down the middle. This is the nuchal crest. That nuchal means neck. So there it is, the back of the skull here. There is a secondary or hard palate right there. Okay, and coani are the internal nostrils, and there are these spaces here. That open from the nasal cavity back. I'm going kind of as quickly as I can through this because we've got some more detailed stuff to look at. Um, oh boy, pterygoid hamulus is very unimpressive on, it's a little bit better on this skull. See this little blip here? That's the pterygoid hamulus, this little hook. And what actually goes there in the living animal, this one doesn't have them as well, but you could at least see what it is. The soft palate extends back from the hard palate all the way across here and spans it. And there's um, the back edge of the soft palate that is here, and there's a little muscle that wraps around that hamulus called the tensor villi palatini that stretches the back of the soft palate and kind of spans across there. And so that's what's going on with that. Um, there is this term, pterygoid fossa, 
And I don't know, did you guys find that? It's an extremely annoying thing to look for a cat or a dog. And it's not just a switch. I'm sure you have a human because humans actually have a really good one. And then you can see why somebody bothered to give it a name. Mm -hmm. So here's the pterygoid hamulus on a person. Mm -hmm. And this big space just lateral to it is the pterygoid fossa. Okay, do you see that? Here's the hamulus, there's the fossa. This is the, the hamulus, this is the fossa, this big space here. You see that okay, mm -hmm. Mackenzie? All right. So much bigger and easier to see. On the cat, you can see just this tiny little groove kind of running along the backside of the pterygoid. Um, cool. Okay, so then we get to the various bones. So what's this one in front? Premaxilla, Pre yes. And then behind it, main bone, maxilla. Um, and just point, I'll just point out that the maxilla does extend pretty far up onto the side in a mammal skull. Um, diastema, what's the diastema? Between the canine and the first molar premax? Mm -hmm. Between the canine tooth and the premolar, so it's this little tiny space here. And in a um, herbivore, that can be a really large space. Carnivores typically have it pretty small. Um, lacrimal bone. Okay, lacrimal. Yeah, it sort of shows up on here. Actually, it's better on this side. Okay, so do you see in here this little bone like this? Yeah. That is the lacrimal, and this hole here is the nasolacrimal canal or lacrimal. Um, canal where the duct from the eye, the tear duct from the eye down into the nose runs. Okay. And that's what you always look for to find the lacrimal bone. So there's the lacrimal bone right there. It's this guy in here. Is it always the foremost bone of the three bones in that little area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always right at the front of the orbit. That's how I think of it. See that? Okay. Um, Oh, lacrimal canal. That, that was the lacrimal canal, too. The zygomatic or jugal bone makes up the front half of the zygomatic arch. So not the whole zygomatic arch, but this is it here. That's the back end of it, and there's the front end of it there. So this is the zygomatic or jugal bone here. Okay. Do you guys want to maybe slide in a little bit, and then I won't have to rotate quite as much since there's not so many?